which letter represents an alkene, right? Uh, so what we want to do here is to have a functional group of an alkene, right? So we know that in an alkene, uh, we have a double bond, right? And then uh, the name ends as E. N E. So when we go to our table here, whatever that has a double bond or the name ends with E N E, we know fully well that uh, that's an alkene, right? Uh, clearly on A here, we have a double bond. So as soon as we see that uh, there's a double bond, we know that it's an alkene, right? Uh, so right now we can just write A. And then B, uh, we don't have any double bond between carbon atoms. And then on C, we have a double bond here so C is part of our solution so for 2.1.1 we have A and C and then for D there's no double bond and then it doesn't end with E and E and then for E uh, no double bond and then for F there's a triple bond right and that's not what we're looking for so the answer for 2.1.1 we just have A and C uh, now let's go to 2.1.2 uh, which letter represents a ketone again we're going to look at the functional group of a ketone uh, for a ketone uh, we need something like this right uh, we need a carbon uh, that is bonded to an oxygen and then bonded to two other carbons right so if we see something like that or a name that ends with O N E, then we know that we have a ketone, right? Uh, so for A, we already know that A is an alkene, so there's no way it can be part of our solution. Uh, but then if you look at B, we have a carbon here bonded to an oxygen and two other carbons. So clearly, B is our ketone, right? Uh, so for 2.1, uh, point two, we have B. Uh, C is also an alkene, so it cannot be part of our solution. Uh, D doesn't have what we're requiring. E and F also doesn't have what we're requiring. So now we can go to 2.1.3. 2.1.3 says, uh, let's look for a compound with a general formula CnH2n minus 2. Right. Uh, if you're not already familiar with this, uh, this is an alkyne. Right. Uh, the name ends with Y and E. Another way of identifying it, uh, we have triple bonds. Right. So a carbon is bonded to another carbon, and there's triple bonds uh, in between the two. So again, we go to our table and we look for that. A cannot be part of our solution. Uh, B cannot be a part of the solution. Uh, C also cannot be part of our solution, right? And then D, we don't have a triple bond or Y and E, right? So that cannot be part of our solution. Uh, for E, no triple bond. And then F, that's where we have our triple bond, right? Uh, you can see it here. So for 2.1.3, uh, we can put F as our answer. Right. Uh, the way of approaching this problem, you have to know exactly what you're looking for. Right. Uh, it becomes extremely easy uh, when you do that. And then 2.1.4 says, let's look for a structural isomer of octanoic acid. Right. Octanoic acid. Uh, so for an acid, if we're looking for a structural isomer, we're looking for another acid or we're looking for an ester right uh, because acids and esters are functional isomers so if the structural isomer is an acid then uh, we should find something uh, of this manner right or something that ends uh, with the name acid right and then if it's an ester then uh, we're looking for something like this right or a name that ends with a t e right uh, a cannot be part of our solution b cannot be part of our solution c cannot be part of our solution but obviously if you look at d this name here ends with a t e right and then not only does it end with a t e it also has eight carbons right like the octanoic acid which is uh, of our interest right so the answer of 2.1.4 uh we are going with d and then now we can do 2.2 uh 2.2 starts by saying that uh let's write down uh, the upec name of compound a so what you want to do first step number one is that to identify the longest carbon chain right so we have um one two three four five six uh even if you take any other way, you'll end up with six, right? 
So now we know that uh, as part of our name, we should have hex. Now we are going to look for the side which leads us to the functional group first. Obviously, if we start uh, counting from this side, if we say one here, two here, and then we have our functional group, right? So it will say hex two in, right? But then if you start on the other side, you'll say one, two, three, four, and then it will be on carbon number four, right? So we prioritize the side that leads us to the functional group first. So we have hex uh, two in, right? Uh, now we can look for the branches. So let's name our carbons first. So that uh, that is carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number four, carbon number five, and carbon number six, right? On carbon number four, we have a branch. We have one carbon, right? And then on carbon number five, we also have a branch so now we can say four comma five dash uh, we don't say methyl right because we have two instead of saying methyl we say dimethyl four comma five dash di uh, methyl right and between ones there's no need to put a dash uh, now we can go and do uh, two point two point two 2.2.2 uh, we need the UPEC name of compound E so let's go look at compound E uh, let's look for the longest carbon chain so if we say this is one two three four five six seven and then if we take this way and we keep going forward we get six right so we can conclude that the longest carbon chain has seven carbons so what is seven we know fully well that uh, seven is hept right so we have hept and then let's look for the functional group. It's an alkane, right? Every carbon is essentially the functional group. So we don't put anything there for an alkane. We can just say heptane. You only put something when you have an alkene or you have an alkyne. And then all the other complicated uh, organic compounds with other functional groups. Now you will realize that we have an ambiguity here. Uh, we have a halogen on the second carbon, right? Uh, when you count, when you start counting from the left, and then we have a branch on the third carbon uh, when you start counting from the right, right? So which one do we prioritize between the carbon and the halogen? Between the carbon and the halogen, we prioritize neither. So whatever that comes first, it's what we take, right? Uh, if a certain path gives us a methyl first, then we're going to take methyl. But then if we start counting from the left, then we get to bromo first. So we're going to take bromo, right? But then you can get a situation where on the left path, you get to bromo and then on the right path, you get methyl. What do you do when you have a situation like that? Then you have to check the alphabet, right? You have bromo and methyl. So you would take bromo because alphabetically wise, bromo comes first. But then now because bromo is on the second carbon from the left and then uh, the methyl is on the third carbon uh, from the right, you just take bromo automatically. Uh, and then if the methyl was on the second carbon and the bromo was on the third carbon, then you would take the path that leads to the methyl first. So we have carbon one, two, three. So on carbon two and three, uh, we have two halogens, right? So we're going to have uh, two comma three dash di bromo, right? Uh, because we have two. And then we can then uh, look for the branch, right? Uh, carbon number four, carbon number five, and then on carbon number five, we have methyl, right? So we're going to have dash five dash methyl. And then uh, there goes our UPEC name. And then last but not least, we have 2.23, uh, which says let's write the UPEC name of compound F. In compound F, we have an alkyne, right? Uh, because we have an alkyne, we have a functional group. So naming will be much easier because we always prioritize the functional group. So we're going to start naming from this carbon here. So we're going to have one, two, right? And then three, four, five. Even if you go up, you still have five carbons, right? Uh, so now it's easy to see that uh, we'll have pent. 
right and then now let's look for the position of the functional group on the second carbon so we're going to have pent uh, 2 y and e now we can look at the branches and so on uh, we have a branch on the fourth carbon so we're going to have 4 dash methyl now let's do 2.3 so 2.3 says that uh, compound D is prepared by reacting two organic compounds in the presence of an acid as a catalyst and then 2.3.1 uh, let's write down the structural formula of compound D so let's go and look at compound D so compound D is pentyl propanoid right uh, we know that if it ends with propanoid it's an ester right uh one thing about an ester the first part of the name is the alcohol and the last part of the name is the acid so let's write the structural formula uh we know fully well that pent is five right so we're gonna have one two three four five we're saying that uh, the first part is the alcohol right uh so here we were supposed to have oh but then when it forms an ester it loses this hydrogen here and everywhere else where i'm putting a dash you fill that uh, with hydrogens right and then the last part propanoid uh, that is the acid so propanoid acid uh, was supposed uh, to look like this right but what happens is that when it forms an ester uh, it loses this oh here right uh, the alcohol loses uh, an h and then the acid loses an oh and then the byproduct is then h2o right so let's put it in our structural formula uh, so here we're gonna have dash a carbon and oxygen carbon and then um there we go uh, so like i said everywhere where there's a dash we just put hydrogen right uh, for the sake of time uh, now let's do 2.3.2 2.3.2 says uh, the UPEC name of the organic acid used to prepare compound D yeah we went through it right I see that the last part comes from the acid and the first part comes from the alcohol it is saying prop so we know that the acid that was used there should be propanoic acid right so 2.3.2 the answer is propanoic uh acid and then if the question was saying let's name the al the alcohol then it was going to be pentanol 2.3.3 says let's name or give the formula of the catalyst uh, that is used right uh in esterification we always use h2so4 or sulfuric acid